Hey gang, what's good? Welcome to another Morrowind Mechanics video guide. Continuing the spell effects subseries, we'll be looking at the Conjuration School of Magic. As with the other entries in this subseries, we'll be running down everything in roughly alphabetical order, but still grouping together similar effects for the sake of comprehension. As always, feel free to use the timestamps I provided in the description if you want to skip to something specific. So Conjuration in Morrowind offers an obscene amount of utility and is particularly valuable early on. Summoned creatures can serve as tanks or help layer additional damage per second against tougher enemies. Bound equipment grants early access to temporary versions of some of the best gear in the game. There's also a couple other effects that offer more niche value. We'll be covering them toward the end. Oh, and mind you that in Morrowind, Soul Trap is actually a mysticism spell not a conjuration spell like you may be accustomed to. First, let's look at bound armor spell effects. Bound armor effects will automatically equip you with a corresponding armor piece for its duration. When the effect wears off, your previously used armor is automatically re-equipped, so you don't need to worry about digging through your inventory. And since this armor is temporary, you also don't need to worry about keeping it repaired. You'll always get a fresh item with each summon. Now you may also notice that not every armor slot has a corresponding bound armor effect. There's no pauldrons or greaves. Anyway, this bound armor has fixed armor ratings. Each piece provides 80 armor rating at all times except for the helmet, which always provides 75. If you want more on how armor rating works, check out my other mechanics guide that covers exactly that. Back on topic. When your bound armor is struck in combat, it actually advances your light armor skill. As I said though, armor rating from bound items is fixed, so no matter how high or low your light armor skill is, you'll always get the same value out of it. This means that as you progress through the game, bound armor will become less and less useful. It's worth pointing out that each piece of bound armor also comes with a small enchantment. They're on screen now. Perhaps the most useful, in my opinion, is the fortify speed effect on the bound boots. Granted, if you're skilled in restoration, you may be able to buff yourself directly with stronger versions of these enchantments. Before we move on, there's one important game-crashing bug to know that's related to bound armor. That's if you create a bound armor effect as a constant effect enchantment on an equipped item that occupies the same slot. Equipping such an item will crash your game. The same goes for items that could contradict one another. So don't put a bound helm effect on your boots if you're already wearing a helmet with bound boots. If you're determined to use these constant effect enchantments, just enchant items that don't already have bound versions, like pauldrons or greaves. It's the safest thing you can do. There's also another bug where repairing bound items may actually make them permanent in your inventory. Like, really permanent. You can't sell them, you can't remove them, nothing. This isn't as bad as it won't crash your game, but you may need to use the Remove Item console command to get rid of it. And if you're on console, well, you're kind of hosed. Similar to Bound Armor, we also have Bound Weapons. These are far more useful than their armor counterpart. For the effect's duration, our character gains a Daedric weapon corresponding to the effect's name. They perform nearly identically to the real deal. They advance the appropriate skill on use, scale with the same stats that regular weapons do, and have nearly identical damage ranges. You see, Bound Dagger and Bound Mace actually do differ in damage ranges. However, the difference is for the better. The other differences that all Bound Weapons share are also net positives. Those are that you don't need to worry about repairing them, they're all weightless, and they come with a plus 10 enchantment to their relevant skill meaning you'll be 10% more likely to hit with them. Of course, you can fit much more potent enchantments on the real thing, but these are fantastic in the early and mid game, especially if weapon weight has got you teetering on being over encumbered. Picking Conjuration as a major or minor skill even gets you a free bound dagger spell right out of the gate. Amazing for a character specializing in short blade. One key note here before we leave bound weapons is that unlike more recent Elder Scrolls games, you will still need to supply arrows if you're using a bound longbow. Moving on, we have the two command effects. 
These function very similarly to Illusion's Frenzy, Rally, Calm, and so on. It's actually kind of surprising that this isn't an Illusion effect. Nonetheless, this effect can temporarily turn NPCs into followers. This can be useful for bringing rich merchants or NPCs that provide fast travel to wherever you call your home. This isn't considered a hostile spell, so you don't need to worry about them turning on you once the effect fades. So you'll still be able to make use of their services, even if they're miles away from their hometown. On occasion, your commanded followers may bug out and revert back to their starting positions. This is more prone to happen during especially long treks. In really bad cases, they'll actually wind up at the absolute center of Morrowind's map. As you can see here, it doesn't really look like the center, but it is according to the game's coordinates. Anyway, once you're nearby, you can use the console command Reset Actor to return all of the living NPCs in your current cell to their starting positions. Otherwise, this spell can be useful for evening the numbers in combat if you're being overrun. Once enemies have engaged combat with one another under this effect, they'll remain fighting once the effect wears off. So, for these purposes, low durations are totally fine. Now, because this spell also breaks combat, it can be useful in one-on-one -on -one scenarios as well, allowing you to re-engage stealth to get extra sneak attacks off. Next are the vast amount of summon creature effects. These are all pretty self-explanatory. You can conjure a creature to aid you in combat. You can even have multiple creatures out at the same time, even if they're identical, as long as the identical creatures are sourced from two different spells. Now, if you use the Atronach burst sign, it's worth knowing that you can fight your own summoned creatures to absorb their spells and refill your Magicka gauge. Of course, you'll need Magicka to cast the summon in the first place, and not all summoned creatures can use offensive magic, but it can still be a handy option if you need it. I'll have a link in the description to a table on UESP.net that lists all of Morrowind's summonable creatures and their stats, including their spell repertoire. It's worth pointing out that if you begin the game with Conjuration as a major or minor skill, you'll also begin with a Summon Ancestral Ghost spell. This ghost does have a spell attack, and it's extremely valuable for brand new Atronac Burst Sign characters. Speaking of useful summons, there are three other summon creatures that are particularly worth paying attention to. Those are Dramoras, Golden Saints, and Hungers. Hungers are a popular summon to work towards because they perform fantastic in combat. They can disintegrate enemy equipment, they can paralyze on touch, and they're immune to all elemental effects as well as normal weapons. Dramoras and Golden Saints, while certainly useful in combat, are typically sought after for different reasons. When a summoned creature is slain in combat, even if by your own hand, there's often a short window of time in which they may be looted before their corpse disappears. Dramoras and Golden Saints both carry high-tier equipment. Most notably, Golden Saints carry the valuable Daedric Tower Shield, which has the highest enchanting potential of any item in the entire game. Now, before you attempt to loot your own summoned creatures, you should definitely save your game, as this can sometimes cause your game to freeze or crash. Absolutely avoid disposing of corpse in this case, as it interferes with the regular despawn that will occur automatically. Anyway, Golden Saints are doubly valuable because they have a 400 size soul, which is needed for creating constant effect enchantments. Soul trapping your own summoned creatures is a great way to fuel your enchanting skill with filled soul gems, or just to make gold by selling off those same filled soul gems. Now, let's go over where you can actually purchase these spells. You can get Dramora and Hunger summons in several locations, but you can actually pick up all three of these spells at once from Phelan Marion. You can find him at Telbranora. However, like many Telvanni Towers, you'll need either levitation or significant acrobatics to reach him. Finally, we come to Turn Undead. If you're familiar with older role-playing games or pen and paper ones, you'll know how this one works. 
It functions just like Illusion's Demoralize effect, in that it increases the hidden flea stat of the target, making enemies more likely to run from you once they're in combat with you. Of course, this effect only works on undead enemies. If you're interested in that flea stat, refer to the Illusion Guide where we go over both flea and fight values in heavy detail. Okay, that ought to do it for all of the Conjuration effects. It's a fantastic school of magic that's useful to practically every playstyle, and it's an invaluable asset when it comes to enchanting. If you're interested in stuff like how cast chances calculated or creating your own custom spells, I've got videos that go in-depth on those topics as well as many other things. I've also got a weekly playthrough of Morrowind going. If you're into that sort of thing, check back every Monday for a new one. Anyhow, thanks for tuning into this one. Peace.